G'day guys, Jacko here for Dialware Australia. Uh, today we're just going to sit down and do a bit of a QA and a um, about Murray Cod. Obviously the world's in um, shambles at the moment with all this coronavirus stuff going on, so it's making it tough for us to get out in the water. Uh, Dialware's uh, taking a bit of initiative and doing a few Q&As. Uh, Phelps, he did a really good one about bass the other day. And I'm going to try and answer some of you, your guys' questions about Murray Cod today. Uh, there was about 70 questions all up across Instagram and Facebook, so I'm not going to get to all of them. I've sort of selected uh, a few a few key ones out, and, and I've bunched a couple together that uh, people might have asked a similar thing. So we'll jump straight into it. Uh, I'm just going to run through the questions. I've just written down on the ground here. What's your go-to most versatile lure for cod? So I'd have to say a chatterbait or a mumbler. So bass me a mumbler or a chatterbait. Um, as they're more commonly known, I guess, with the bass scene over in America and whatnot. I think uh, you can definitely, you can get different size chatterbaits, so different weight heads. You can, uh, all you got all your different colors, so skirts and plastic combinations. And probably the most versatile thing about them is you can fish them at any depth. So you can let, kind of like a spinner bait or just a normal soft plastic, you can just cast that out and you can, if you want to fish it in a meter of water, you can or if you want to fish it in 10 meters of water you can. So it's very versatile, especially for an impoundment. I'm going to be talking mainly about impoundment fishing uh, in this Q&A. That's pretty much what I predominantly do these days. I used to do a lot of river fishing, but nowadays I spend most of my time chasing big fish and impoundments. So we'll stick to uh, mostly impoundment fishing throughout this. Uh, the other thing with the chatterbait is it's sort of an in-between bait between a reaction and also imitating a bait fish. So they do kind of look natural, uh, especially with a big plastic trailer off the back and you've got that skirt pulsing along as you retrieve it. And then it's also got that reaction where, where you've got that chatter blade on the front uh, kicking along. It throws out a fair bit of, it's got a fair bit of reaction about it. So uh, it's, it's sort of in between those two, um, being a natural boat, but also having a bit of reaction about it. So. I find you can fish it year round, uh, not just in summer, not just in winter. It can be real effective uh, throughout the whole year. So, you know, if I'm fishing an impoundment, I've always got at least one uh, rod rigged up with a chatterbait. Do you have more luck in the morning or the afternoon and night? Uh, I'd say uh, this question's pretty much a 50-50. I don't really have a preference between fishing afternoons or mornings. Um, either or either are really good. You know, first light, last light, both prime bite times for Murray Cod. So yeah, either one doesn't bother. You know, I try to keep a bit of a diary and over the last sort of year, uh, a lot of my fish, it's pretty much 50-50, so I don't have a preference. Um, often afternoons can be easier to fish because you're not having to get out of bed really early and especially in winter when it's really cold, so it's a bit easier to get out in the water. But you know, first light, yeah, it, it definitely does offer a really good bite. If you're keen to get out there, definitely um, get out for the morning sessions, but they both work really well and fishing right through the night as well, especially if you can time that around moon phases and whatnot. Uh, nighttime fishing is really good for Murray Cod, especially when they're up hunting food in the shallows. They've got a lot more confidence to get up there in the shallows and can often result in better fishing than during the day, I find. How do you decide the depth you are going to fish? Uh, good question. Normally I like to, uh, if it's a new fishery, I'll go and sand around a fair bit, use my electronics to my advantage and try and find, the first thing I'll try and find is bait. So if you can find bait, be that trout, carp, bony brim, bobby cod, heap of different bait. Um, if you can find that in a certain water depth, the cod aren't gonna to be too far away. So that's the first thing I'm gonna be looking for. The next thing is actually looking for fish themselves on the sounder, if I'm finding fish on the sounder, uh, you can often, you'll often find that those fish will be sitting in a certain depth given the time of year. So. Normally, you know, if you find if you see five or six fish on the sand or find a good con concentration of bait, that'll give you a, a good idea about what level all the fish will be sitting at. Uh, it normally goes with the times of year, so uh, in the warmer months, I'll, the bait and the fish will normally be a bit deeper, so you want to be fishing a bit deeper. And then in winter, uh, they normally move up and the fish will be a lot shallower. Ties into the next question as well. Uh, we did have a few questions about uh, Copeton and the best tips for Copeton. So the number one tip for Copeton, as it is with a lot of the big impoundments in New South Wales and Victoria, Queensland, is find the bait, basically. If you can find the bait uh, in Copeton, it's normally gonna be carp or spangled perch, AKA bobby cod. If you can find where they are, the cod are never gonna be far away. So, you know, sometime, some winter, last winter, the cod, the bobby cod were really deep. 
and the cod really deep, so you, there wasn't a very good surface bite. But in previous years, especially in winter, uh, those those bait fish get pushed right up into the shallows. And when you when you can see them in the shallows, often you'll see them visually first thing in the morning. You'll see them just breaking the surface. It's generally because they're getting chased by big cod underneath. So. Yeah, find the bait. If the bait's shallow, fish shallow. If the bait's deep, fish deep. What's different when fishing dams in summer versus winter? Had a few questions on this one as well. Um, for me personally, I definitely prefer fishing impoundments in winter, um, purely because those fish are normally going to be shallower. So when it gets cold, those big cod in impoundments are going to push bait generally up into the shallower reaches. So that's when you get really good swim bait bites and chatterbait bites like right up in the shallows in, in three metres and under. Whereas in summer, um, those fish are normally a lot deeper. So they'll, they'll normally warm the water, they'll find an area generally around the thermocline where those fish are comfortable and they'll sit down there. I know this summer in our empowerment, local empowerments, the fish are actually been sitting down in 10 metres of water. So um, it makes them very hard to target when, especially on the cast, fish in 10 metres of water, it's very hard to get your lure down in there and into the strike zone. So that's one of the biggest things, the biggest difference between uh, summer and winter is the depth that the fish will generally be at. Uh, another one that I like to change up is reaction versus imitation. So that's like a reaction bait, like a hard body, uh, kind of a chatterbait, spinnerbait definitely, versus a natural bait like a swim bait, surface lure even. Um, big just plastic on its own that type of thing so uh, in the summer they're generally more they react better to a reaction bait basically so if you're and they often will sit in their snags a lot more so fish and stuff like rock walls and timber uh, you want to be well for me personally I want to be banging my um, spinner baits hard bodies into that structure and trying to get reaction strikes out of those fish whereas when it comes to winter um, baits normally a lot less and the big cod will often push up shallower and actually chase bait fish that's when i want to be fishing areas like points big open flats wherever there wherever i can find bait and use things like hard body swim baits soft body swim baits big paddle tail plastics to really imitate that bait and that's generally just with a slow wind uh, back through where all the bait is and often you'll fool a few cod doing that now we had a fair few pie questions uh, which is pretty funny. If you've got no idea what I'm talking about here, I do a few pie reviews uh, on my Instagram page. If you want to go check them out, you can go check them out. But I'll just run through a couple of the uh, pie questions that we had really quick. Uh, where's the best? Where's Australia's best pie? Still haven't found it, still looking, but the best I've had so far was Stanley Bakery in Northwest Tasmania. How many pies between meteries? Uh, way too many, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah, have a lot of pies between meteries and it hurts the old uh, gut. What type of meat pie works best? <laughs> uh, I'd have to say lamb and rosemary. Um, had a fair few lamb and rosemary pies on the way up to Copeton on trips and done alright on those trips. So I have to say lamb and rosemary. If you're going to go on a fish trip, run one of them. And would you rather a meat of cod or a unicorn pie? Uh, I am chasing that 10 out of 10 pie, but yeah. When I do find it, it's still not going to compare to catching a metre cod. Best I can answer that. Back to the fishing. What can be done better to improve your hookup rate? Uh, definitely something that I live by this is tighten your drag on your bait cast reel right up or even your spin reel. Uh, use heavy line and when you get a hit, swing as hard as you can. Uh, generally with cod fishing, you're going to be using a hook, a, either a single hook or a treble hook. It's going to have a pretty thick gauge on it to handle those big cod. Uh, so what that means is those hooks aren't going to bend on a big cod, but because they're such a thick gauge, they are going to be harder to get into the fish's mouth, be it the roof of the mouth, the corner of the jaw, back of the tongue, wherever you're going to hook them. Because that hook is such a heavy gauge, it's going to be harder to do. So if you've got a loose drag, when that fish hits and you give it some, if you've got a loose drag, a lot of the time that, that barb won't get into the fish's mouth and it'll actually peel drag before you can really sink those hooks in. And often you'll find if, if you're getting hits and you give, it, you give it a strike, but then you're missing the fish, that's often because your drag's gonna be too loose. So with me, I'll live by it, have that drag cranked right up and as soon as that fish hits, I swing as hard as I can and try and sink those hooks into its mouth. Um, during the fight, I'll back the drag off. 
uh, but yeah, when you get that hit, just swing as hard as you can, have a tight drag, and make sure you use heavy enough line that you're not gonna uh, compromise breaking your line on that strike. What setup do I recommend for Murray Cod? Rod, reel, line. I'll answer this based off just impoundment fishing. Uh, these days, swim bait rods, there's a lot of good swim bait rods on the market. I use the Daiwa Tatula range of rods. There's three swim bait rods in the range. There's a 7.3, a 7.6, and a 7.9. Uh, one throws up to 100 grams, one throws up to 220 grams, and the big Bertha throws up to 250 grams. So uh, when I'm out for a session, I normally have one of, them, one of each of those rigged up on my boat. Um, I can't recommend them enough. Uh, you want to have that extra length. You know, back in the day, everyone was using sort of five, six foot rods. But when you're fishing in an impoundment, you want to have that extra length. It's a real lifesaver when you want to get those extra meters on your car. So if you're flinging big swim baits, chatter baits, surface lures, whatever it is, having that extra foot or two on your rod, you'll get many more meters on your cast. So, mate, try and, if, you, if you're in the market, to get a new rod, try and stick to those swim bait rods. They handle cod really well and you can throw pretty much any lure on them. Uh, reels, size 200 or 300 size reels. I normally run 200 HD tatulas on most of my rods. They handle all the stuff I've got to do. Uh, lines, probably a pretty big one. I like to throw 50 pound J braid uh, grand on all my reels. So, uh, 50 pound, as I was saying before, when you've got a lock drag and you're hitting those fish pretty hard on the strike, 50 pound's not going to snap on you. And another good thing about the 50 pound is when you're casting big swim baits and you might get the occasional bird's nest, I know I do, um, that 50 pound's not going to snap. So a lot of the times if you're using those lighter braids, 20, 30 pounds, and you're throwing a big swim bait and you get a bird's nest, it'll actually, it can snap your braid and you can be throwing $100 swim baits out to the bottom of the, bottom of the dam and um, yeah, that's not much fun, I've done it before. So definitely try and go around that, at least 40, 40 to 60 pound, I, I stick with 50. On the leader side of things, I just run fluorocarbon, 60 pound, um, 60 pound across the board basically. I find 60 pound does a great job. I only run, never run more than a rod length. So I never let that uh, FG knot from the braid to the leader get back into my reel. I don't think uh, leader size or leader length really bothers the cord too much. Three favourite impoundment lures. Well, I'd have to start with the chatterbait. As I said at the start, love chatterbaits. You can fish them across a variety of depths and they work, I find they work year round really well. Second one would have to be a swim bait. Uh, probably go something like a jackal gantrel or jackal gigantrel. Um, a real natural hard body swim bait. Uh, jackal gantrel is one of my favourites. They've really proved the test over the last few years. They've caught a lot of Murray cod and I've got a fair few on them as well. So they're a great lure. Uh, definitely, if you haven't got a few of them, check those guys out and um, put a few in your tackle box. They're not cheap, but they do work. And the third lure would probably be a spinnerbait. Uh, don't know what it is about spinnerbaits. They don't really represent anything, but they do get reaction strikes out of fish. And definitely in summer, a spinnerbait is my go-to when fishing timber. So a lot of the time in summer, those fish will be sitting tight to timber on, or on big rock walls and you can't beat a spinnerbait for banging it in there and trying to get a reaction strike out of them. Probably my go-to spinnerbait would be a one ounce, um, normally Bassman or Assassin spinnerbait. Uh, I normally run a trailer of about 150 to 200 mil plastic on the back of that and generally I only fish one blade on it so I normally go a big size 6 to 8 Colorado single blade. Um, generally I'm fishing them in summer and just having that one way just helps us syncrate so I can get down into where those fish are a bit better, a bit quicker. Do you think scent makes a difference for cod like it does for yellow belly? Uh, interesting question. I've only sort of changed my view on this one recently uh, in the last year. I never thought it would um, and I still don't think scent makes much of a difference on reaction baits, so spinner baits, hard bodies and that type of stuff. Um, when you're trying to get a reaction strike out of the fish, they're often, they're not committed to eating the lure, I don't feel. They just want it out of their territory. So I don't think scent plays a big role. But if you're fishing stuff uh, like swim baits or real natural lures, I think scent can definitely make a difference. And I started using it a lot uh, on when I'm fishing swim baits and plastics. So um, yeah, it's hard to explain, but a lot of the times cod will follow a lure out and 
If they've got their nose behind a lure and following it, often that scent, I believe, personally, can actually trigger them into biting. Another good, uh, good reason to have scent is if you're fishing vertical, so if you're using stuff like uh, vibes or even big curl tile plastics and you're fishing for cod vertically, often you can see them on your sounder and that type of thing. Uh, if you're sitting that lure in their face, scent, I believe, can make a difference. So uh, I think we all know these days how effective scent is for yellow belly fishing, and I definitely think if you're trying to go that natural approach or you're sitting a lure in a cod's face, uh, scent can make a difference. Do you find it more productive to watch weather conditions, e.g. moon phase, barometric pressure, or just get out and fish when you can? Yeah, definitely just get out and fish when you can. That's my motto. I do watch the weather religiously, but so, you know, everyone's time poor these days. So generally just getting out for a fish uh, whenever you can is the best thing to do. I, I don't really, I, if it's, if it's bad conditions and I've got some time there, I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna go fishing, but I do watch it and watch my moon phases and my barometric pressure a lot. And if I know, well, if I think it's gonna be a good, good day to be out there or a good afternoon or a good morning, I will try my best to be out on the water then. And leading on from that is my favorite weather conditions for chasing cod. So uh, moon phases, I don't, it's, I like to fish around, so moon, rise and moon set are normally key bite times I've found so an hour either side of that uh, doesn't matter if it's during the day or during the night and either side of a moon rise or a moon set if you can time a session around then is really good and the, with the barometric pressure uh, generally you know every the old the old saying is 10 20 fish is plenty fish are plenty um, I don't really believe in that you know keeping a diary myself I've found that fish will bite on any barometric pressure, uh, but they do seem to bite better if that barometric pressure is moving. It's uh, volatile in its movements, uh, not steady. So if you've just got a barometric pressure that's pretty much just plateauing at say 10, 15, and not really moving at all, it, I find it harder fishing. Whereas if you've got a volatile barometric pressure and it might be 10, 20, and then it's dropping to 10, 10, and then back up to 10, 15. Around those high, those drops and rises is when you'll get your key bite times. Uh, I know I've definitely, with cod and also bass, I've had some uh, unbelievable sessions right before uh, big storm fronts come in. And when a big storm front comes in, that generally relates to a barometric pressure really dropping. And yeah, that can really trigger a bite. So. Um, jump on, jump on your weather apps and have a look at uh, your synop synoptic charts, and they'll um, you'll be able to see like for the next seven days high and low pressure systems coming through your area, and if you can time if you can time your sessions around when you believe that pressure is going to have a, a steady climb or a steady drop, you'll definitely be better off. What's your biggest Murray cod and how did you catch it? Uh, my PB is 121 centimeters. Uh, that was at Cobden Dam on a jackal gantrel, uh, fishing in about five meters of water. It was actually in a bay, so we found a bay that had a lot of bait in it, and it had steep banks either side, so what we what we believe was happening is those big cod were actually channeling along those deeper edges and pushing all the spangled perch, bobby cod, up into this little bay, and it was only about 20 to 30 meters wide. And we'll basically just throwing our swim baits in there and just bringing them out in about five meters of water. And uh, yeah, we caught a few fish over the meter that trip doing that, but that one particular one uh, hit me on the paws. I had my f face turned to the side actually when he hit me and it absolutely jarred me up. Hit me like a freight train and yeah, fought like a demon. Took a long time to get that fish in the boat and it went 121, so good fish and yeah, PB. Will leader size matter in clear water for cod? Sort of touched on it before. My personal belief is no. Um, I can see Maybe if you're fishing natural stuff like swim baits, um, how you could think that it, it might affect it because if you come, if you're coming, say the cod's facing this way and your bait's coming this way, they might pick that line up. But generally, I find, find by watching sounders, once that fish picks up the bait, they'll swing in behind it and follow it and eat it. And I, yeah, I just don't feel that running a small leader size will really affect the bite. Um, it's an interesting one. I don't really have a definite answer on that, but I personally just stick to my heavy leaders around that 60 pound because I know when I do hook a fish, I'm gonna be able to get them in. What's your best advice for starting to film fishing videos from your boat? 
Um, so I do, I like to film a lot of my stuff. Uh, it's good to look back on, especially in times like we're going through at the moment where we're all sort of got to stay at home. I like to sit back and, and go back a couple of years and, and watch and fish and footage from back there. And also I, I chuck them up on YouTube and whatnot. But it's a good question. Basically GoPros. GoPros these days are really good. Um, they've got good stabilization. They give actually, they give a nice sharp image and they're really versatile. They're only small. You can put them on your chest. You can get different attachments and put them all, all over your boat. So um, I know when I started doing my videos, the first thing I got was a GoPro. I'm pretty sure it was a Hero 3. So that's going way back. They're up to the Hero 8 now. Uh, but yeah, they're just, they're just easy to use and they take a pretty good picture and you can, you can put them on you, you can put them on the boat, you can attach them to your boat really easy to, to capture those hookups. So definitely my best, um, best recommendation is grab a GoPro and then also uh, software. Uh, you've got to find some software to use. If you've got a Mac, use iMovie. iMovie is pretty good. Or if you're on Windows, um, GoPro actually have um, some software that you can free download off their website called GoPro Studio. I used to use that and it's pretty good jump on uh, YouTube and watch a few tutorials on how to use it and you'll pick it up pretty quick. Good one here from Copper. Do you think an easterly wind affects the bite? Uh, Copper, mate, you know that you never go fishing on an easterly wind. <laughs> nah, it's a bit of an old wives tale, this one. A lot of the old, old timers like to say that you don't go fishing on an easterly wind. Um, personally, I don't, I wouldn't definitely, I wouldn't can a session because there's an easterly wind, that's for sure. I don't think wind matters that much, but after you gave me that question, I did jump on my diary and have a bit of a look and there is a bit of correlation there between easterly winds and a tough bite. So it might it might be true the old wives tale, but yeah, I definitely I definitely don't pay too much attention to it. Uh, final one. Describe the feeling of catching an absolute stonker of a goodoo. <laughs> um, for me personally, uh, nothing really compares to that feeling. It's hard to explain to people, but you know, I, I'm not very quick, but if I was, if I could run 100 metres in under 10 seconds, I'd want to win a gold medal at the Olympics. That's all I'd want to do. But I can't do that. What I can do is I can fish, and you know, my number one goal in fishing is catching those big, big cod over a metre. And when I catch one that's over that, like one of those big, big fish, uh, yeah, it's the best feeling in the world. You know, winning an Olympic gold is the best feeling in the world for me. That's like winning my gold medal. You know, it's completely different ends of the spectrum, but yeah, for me, that's the feeling I get. Uh, it's just a great sense of achievement and accomplishment. Uh, just a just a amazing fish they are. Uh, they grow so big, and yeah, I can't recommend getting out there and chasing them enough. You know, cod fishing. It's not an easy. It's not an easy game. Um, they can be very difficult to catch. Often, spend a lot of time on the water between hits and between fish. You know. Myself included, I go. I have many donut sessions out there, but I think that's what makes makes them what they are. Because if you went out there and they were easy to catch and you caught them all the time, it wouldn't have that same feeling. So I enjoy I enjoy the trips that I go out there and don't catch anything. It makes me keen to get back out there and have success. And I also learn something every time I'm out there on the water. It doesn't matter if I catch something or not. Always learning, and that'll um, that's how you improve your game for cod fishing. Anyway guys, that's pretty much it. Wrap it up there. Uh, I didn't get to all the questions, but I thought I covered pretty much the general list uh, of questions. I hope everyone got something out of it. Um, yeah, if you've got any more questions, make sure you can jump on the socials and, and send me a message and, and I'll try and get back to you as quick as possible. Apart from that guys, stay safe through this uh, pandemic we're going through. Obviously it's not ideal. Hopefully it passes quick um, and we can get back out on the water soon. Cheers for watching.